which is cool. This is Flotilla Friday for uh, Friday, October 22nd, 2021. Uh, we're talking about how to sync uh, a HackMD Flotilla dashboard page uh, to multiple places like Google Docs and Trove and Massive Wiki. And um, so, um, Mark Antoine, you want to go back over? No, and, and we were just speaking about the, the, the pros and cons of doing it from the other tools of our specifying uh, the URLs and the ICMD. It is easier, for example, in Massive Wiki because you control it or Trove because you control it to have push to HackMD, pull from HackMD on those tools which you control. It would be nice to have a microservice where we could say, here's a HackMD page, here's its identities and other systems, and let's make those mesh. The question is, where do we put the various identities? They could be as Vincent proposed in the HackMD metadata. Like you can find this in this Google page, you can find this in this Trove page, you can find this in this massive wiki page and then the syncing service would use that as a basis it's not a bad thing except there's there's something that bothers me about putting the metadata in the data uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah and to add i think that maybe a concern that i have is the um, having the microservice would mean that there's not like a critical node. So like, let's say like Trove went offline or we, someone didn't want to use it. And then you would be able to just replace it in with other platforms. It's more of a protocol than a platform, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And so it doesn't, re it's not reliant on there being massive wiki or Trove as one of the like needed um, places that things are syncing from for it to work, if that makes sense. Like if we wanted to do a combination without HackMD or Trover Massive, then it's like, wait, how do we do that now? But the, 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 good, the good thing I must say is that I keep saying, if you have a document locator, you want to replace it with a snapshot ID and an event source. And saying that either HackMD or uh, Massive Wiki is you know, here's the URL of the snapshot and here's the URL of the event source. And if we want to put the snapshots in IPFS or if we want to put the event source in Kafka, that's irrelevant. <laughs> uh, it should be irrelevant. But the idea is documents as here, locator gives me a page should not exist. They should be replaced by uh, snapshot plus event source. And, and, and a Git repo is a perfectly fine snapshot plus event source implementation <laughs> and so is ipfs plus kafka for example i don't care <laughs> it we shouldn't all of them <laughs> we shouldn't have to choose there uh, but once you have this notion the fact that the same document exists in many places and in all those places it can refer to its own or to different document uh, snapshot ID plus event source implementation, that's the abstraction we want. Sorry, I, for the micro microservice design, but that's a higher level. Um, for completeness, I'm gonna, um, I'm going to suggest another, another approach, which is to grab HedgeDoc, which is the community edition of HackMD, um, and hack the GitHub sync in that until it's not complex. Um, I I think this is a bad one. I'm not even sure that GitHub the GitHub sync is is part of the community edition. Um, uh, but it's it's worth looking at least. Um, so I, I'm so we're not going to finish this one today. Uh, so I will take it as an action item to think more about this and and do some research. Um, uh, and this might be a little um, working group. Um, me and Vincent and Mark Antoine and and maybe Michael. Um, 
uh, we can figure 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 it out. Um, but it's worth figuring out. I am slightly unclear on the problem we're trying to solve. Um, it, it sounds like there's like a large overall problem, like hey, let's collaborate, and some sort of like tool based blocks to um, persistent async collaboration and yeah, the, collaboration and merging them. But the, I'm not sure that's the best. I, I, I think, yeah, I think um, there's a shorthand way to say it is HackMD has a lot of a lot of advantages um, and we want to use it as a front end to things like massive wiki and trove and Google Docs and stuff like that. Um, uh, so then the question is, how do you keep the dashboard in HackMD in sync with massive wiki or trove? And especially how do you keep all three of those synced? Um, uh, there's, if I, if you, if you dolly back a little bit, um, a, a little bit different way to think about the problem is, um, uh, real time editing is an important component of, I guess there's a couple things. So HackMD is, has got real time editing, massive wiki doesn't, um, Trove doesn't, um, yet, <laughs> uh, uh, Massive, or sorry, HackMD also has, it's pretty, pretty good with simplicity for um, non sophisticated users, um, non expert users. So um, I think we, we all feel like, and it's funny, it's the technologists who think this, but um, we think that if we could give the non technologists um, an easy front end, HackMD is not a bad choice. Um, Especially when you know it's there's some pretty cool things you can do. You can pretend it's just a web page, yeah. Just pretend it's a web page. Um, you can also tell people if you feel super adventurous, you know, click on this thing and type something in there, and it doesn't matter too much if you screw something up. Just type something, and there's n you know, like any good real time editor markdown thing. It there's no you know, it's just like I'm type text and you're winning you've you're you're successful right um so between ease of use and real-time uh real-time collaboration hackmd is a good front end for more complicated things like sets of notes and still um and i gotta go basically now but there's nobody but technologists using hackmd with apologies to wendy um i you know, I um, Judy used to love HackMD. Um, oh. Judy's, you know, very smart, but she's also not a sophisticated technology user. Oh, okay. um, she, well, she's sophisticated with some technology, but not, you know, editors and stuff like that. I, I, it's a, it's a good, good, um, uh, maybe a different way, maybe a different way to say it. I've been running uh, a Etherpad server for a decade or something like that. And all kinds of random regular people use it. Um, school administrators and school kids writing papers and, you know, a lot of people. And, and when you have a, when you have a system that just, you can look at it like a web page, or if you're not, you know, somebody tells you you can type on it and you're not going to break things. It's, it's, uh, and the way I usually set up HackMD, I don't even like you, it's got access control, but what I do is set the access control that everyone can write because there's a version history and stuff like that. Um, it's kind of easier than Google Docs, even. Um, it's less familiar than Google Docs, but there's not many degrees of freedom to like, you know, the big thing is, is figuring out this pain thing, which is kind of a pain in the butt, but, um, but once you show somebody a picture even, or maybe a little video, click this button, type here, you're done, right? That's the, all the instruction you need for it. So. All right, um, um, bye, good luck. Thanks, Mark. See you next week. I should have done a better job of listening to Mark instead of talking to Mark. Following <laughs> up on what Mark said, um, I have, I hope this is not an annoying comment, but wouldn't we solve this entire problem by not deleting the HackMD, like using the HackMD as like the source of truth and then pulling it into massive wiki? 
um, and then I could pull it into Trove, but like using that as the main editor, the only problem would be then if you edit it further in another place, how does it sync back? Um, the the problem I've got with that one is 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 more or less the sync thing. Um, uh, I guess so. If if you're not making sure that it's synced to the wiki, you can end up with a split brain problem where um, the wiki's got one set of notes and the Hackmd's got another set of notes because somebody's been continuing to add to it. Um, and if if we don't have something that makes sure they're in sync all the time, then they're just going to be out of sync and it's it's going to like diverge and be horrible. Um, so we don't have a single source of truth anymore. Um, which argues maybe for for automatic syncing and just just do that um, and not have anybody pushing buttons or anything like that. I, I actually kind of like that one. If if it syncs automatically, then that's good. Um, the the other another way to look at the problem, um, as you, as you kind of described it, Vincent, you could just have a bunch of HackMD pages. We could have all the HackMD pages for all these notes still lying around, and they would have a nice and you know URL and stuff like that. Um, the problem with that is that um, HackMD doesn't really have wiki links yet, um, even though you can kind of fake it. It's it's pretty ugly and hard to use. Um, so I like I I I I like narrowing down. I like narrowing it down to there's a dashboard and we watch the dashboard carefully and make sure it's synced both ways. Um, instead of making a whole bunch of pages that are just going to continually kind of drift out of sync and we're going to have a hard time keeping track of them. But maybe, you know, maybe we should automatically sync back and forth between the wiki and, and I don't know. You kind of you kind of end up with. So if you keep syncing them back and forth, when we get a lot better, and these these things, you know, all of these things should be links, wiki links, right? Um, uh, when we start making those wiki links, and the wiki is really useful, then all of those links are gonna gonna be broken in in um, in the HackMD mirrors of it. Are the wiki, how do the wiki links get exported, if at all? Um, well, wiki links are, they're internal. Okay. So they're not super useful. I guess another, um, <laughs> Maybe that's the wrong way to. I, I kind of know what you're asking. Um, is a wiki link a resource? I think is kind of where you're going with it. So um, we don't have this for, for flotilla yet, but we will. We'll have the the interactive wiki synced to or snapshotted out to a static website, right? So then each of these links, if you want to link to this massive wiki conceptual diagram, this is actually a a key thing that we keep um, pointing people to. It has a permalink, um, and that's what it is. Right. So, so, those, so those links you could technically um, can't you keep the URL the same between like so that's math.wiki slash that identifier in the URL. Can't you just keep we figure out how to keep that the same? So if it's like HackMD. Then, and, and put it over in HackMD? Yeah, so I'm saying HackMD, the, the internal HackMD links to the different HackMD pages follows the same structure that MassiveWiki follows, <laughs> for example. Um, or follows a logically similar structure, like here's yeah. where we change the event um, date. Yeah. Yeah, you end up with some kind of Frankenstein a massive wiki hack and these things. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of quoting Charles 
whatever works. Um, I'm, I'm interested, yeah, in like, how do we, um, how often do we actually collaboratively edit these notes outside of the meetings? Is it mostly you editing? And then in that case, maybe the easiest thing to do for now is just to make a button that you could push that syncs your up-to-date notes to everyone else. If nobody else literally edits the notes after ever. Um, it, it should, it should not be just me. Um, uh, it should be, it's not going to be everybody, but it should be a few people and you should kind of be able to do it asynchronously. So if Bill gets excited or Zeke gets excited or Wendy gets excited, they should be able to go in here and do this kind of, you know, let's, let's make this a link and then let's take that, that page and fill out that page. Um, uh, we'll also get, we'll start getting people doing comments and things like that, um, or expansions of, of it. So it, it, if, if it's only me editing it, then yeah, it's a, a simple problem, but that's the wrong, the wrong way to go. We should get, you know, 20% of, of the, the, of the folks editing it at least a little. Yeah, I do. I do agree with that. And, and we should do it more. Um, so the, the exact thing that you're talking about this, you know, let's go through all of these notes and kind of make a list of topics and, and make a, a dashboard page of the things that we, we care about and the things that we want to do dashboard pages. Um, we should do that every couple of weeks together. And in between, everybody should be doing a little bit of it or, you know, many people, not everybody. Um, uh let's let's keep thinking about it um and let's start doing some stuff i i like the idea of making a, a I, I i would start we don't have to start here but i like the idea of creating a dashboard hack md and making sure that we keep that going and then maybe go from there i have a horrible 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 question uh have you looked at netlify cms uh only glancingly um it's a cms backed by git i'm trying to see how different it is in gold from massive wiki and would it have all of those tools has the work been done <laughs> Sorry to yeah it's a good <laughs> idea um I'll, I'll look uh all the massive wikis i make as static sites are hosted on netlify not not through their cms they're just static html files, but I'm but, really but, happy but, with but, that. Interesting. But yeah, their CMS is GitHub based back. Yep. Yep. And it's got even notion of users, because one thing that really, uh, I just raised it in passing uh, in the chat, but the notion, oh, you'd rather people didn't do PR from something else, but that means you have to control user access. It centralizes user access. Well, I'm, some... I, I, you know, the, a big part of Massive Wiki is that anybody can do a PR. Um, so I, I'm totally about PRs. Um, it's just that for people who are like Bill, Bill doesn't need to be forking and doing PRs against the Flotilla Wiki. He should just be in the Flotilla Wiki. <clears throat> Did I kind of answer your question or? Maybe. I'm, I, I'm trying to make a generic point about mm -hmm. uh, No, the, the, I'm trying to make a point about um, what is no just just the philosophy of it, right? It's, do you do you want to control uh, PRs and and contributors? And that is the point of the CMS. The CMS does allow you to have yeah. uh, various <laughs> levels of user permissions in a way that's a bit easier than. GitHub. So I guess it does depend on the GitHub. So yeah, forget it, I guess. I, I forget it. <laughs> uh, there's something in there. Um, I wonder if we still have quorum for uh, talking about um, Clumbake. Or if we should do that another time. Wendy, you want to do um, 
uh, map, map show and tell? I would love to. Yeah, that'd be great. I guess we've got the recording so people can catch up later. True. So I put in Mattermost in case somebody wants to see it there, open it up for yourself. I put in the first one, there's six or so maps. So maybe screen sharing makes sense. Um, let me bring them all up first on my, on my uh, computer. One sec. And which channel? I put it, uh, I put the first one right in Flotilla. Gotcha. Just a little bit ago in case we got a chance to talk about it. And then there's more, there's all of them in the Flotilla Project Clambake channel. Gotcha. Sorry for all the dings. And I have to figure out where I put them all. Okay. Shush. I'm just gonna bring up two to start. see okay um share my screen all right let me know that you can see it yeah you're this, all good this yeah. is scapel so this is scapel yeah thank you pete you introduced me to scapel um okay my goal here is in realizing that the biggest role I can play is the user interface piece. As I was, I was away last week for people who didn't know, I was away last week, but it gave me a chance to kind of think about all that I had absorbed over the last six months or so, and then to start to figure out how I could best manifest what I'm envisioning in a way that would help do some proof of concept and also maybe be of service to people at the same time. So Vincent and I had had a previous conversation about may, can we put a map on top of Trove and maybe use say the press conference as, an, as, a, as a use case, as a, as a test case. And I'd been talking to Jonathan Sand about who does user interface stuff about, um, about creating something, maybe using Kumoon, modifying it, maybe, you know, having, so Jonathan Sand and I have been talking for about a month, maybe a little more now about what was possible. And what's come for me out of those conversations is what we really wanna do isn't possible, which is not a surprise. That's the hurdle I've been, I've been trying to jump for a long time. So in my vacation, I decided, okay, let me at least use for myself, just use Scapple, make it super simple. Of course, it's not the design I want, but at least starts to lay things out. What would I do? I took Jamin's email, which was a beautiful summary email of how he was organizing the information. So I used his organization to map it out and added just a couple little pieces of my own. So the information, the text is all his. And then I, um, but it, all the while I'm, 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 trying to create something that I know will be a starting place for something to happen in Project Clambake, hopefully, right? So we take this, this is kind of where we're going. And then it serves as a, as a talking point for us to say, okay, how does this information actually match up to what's in Trove? How does it not? If we, can we change a database in some way so that it can feed a Kumu map and then the Kumu map, right? So it's just the beginning of a conversation. So now just to describe the, um, the visual, I've always seen it, this particular project for me as a proof of concept simply in people coming in and navigating their way to important pieces of information. This is not a very scalable design. I totally get that. But for right now, this particular proof of concept, I wanna just get people in 
and help them find what they're looking for. So I was coming at it from an audience standpoint of I'm a participant in this in, in this day of people presenting stuff. I'm coming into something and I want to find my way through it. So, you know, through the site to what's most interesting to me. So again, I started from Jamin's perspective, which is the perspective of holding the entire conference and all the information. I personally would come at it probably from myself and the presentation that I gave. So I have that dashboard as well. Um, and I'm only showing you two things here just to kick off the conversation, but I'm happy to show you all the others. So this puts the, the conference in the middle, the name of the conference in the middle. I use some basic um, nodes to branch off all of his um, detail here. So my, it's my, the basics is my term. The emergence is my term. Knowledge sets is my term. Presentations is kind of obvious, but that's my term. The people is my term. Um, the rest comes from other places. So it comes from him. Um, it all comes from him. So the white, all white are links, right? They would might be a little, a, a small little title or something like that if you were to click on it and then it would be the link out to the video. Or if the video was held on Trove, it could, it could just embed something, right? And then start up. But everything else is basically navigating you to somewhere else, right? All the pink is really just nav navigating you to somewhere else. It's, it's a holding spot or a node that then has more things attached. This shows two tiers. What I mean by that, I mean, we could talk about it in any way we want, but the press conference being zero and the next ring being one and the outer ring being two. I, if you go further than that, it starts to just be too heavy. So a lot of the information was around the knowledge sets. And so I created a separate map for each one of the knowledge, the five knowledge uh, sets presented here, starting with a few, a new story for humanity and then going down. So the second page I'm gonna show you is, uh, is a new story for humanity and the others are similar. Does anyone want to, I'll stop for a second. Does anybody want to just reply or what do you think or before I go on or do you want me to go on first? Really, it's really pretty. Um, congratulations, Wendy. Um, sure. And the, the, the different styles are, are really, um, really useful. Um, I especially like the little um, purple bubbles on knowledge sets and presentations with the dates. Those are really cool. And, the, and that blue, um, line connecting the, the second level. That's really cool too. To me, um, it's so funny that you bring up the design because to me, that's the thing I like the least about it <laughs> mm -hmm. because I'm so limited in, in scapel with what I can or can't do. So yeah, I, I, you know, I, um, well, so I've done a lot of scalpel and, um, yeah, the constraint is kind of a good, it's kind of a good thing and kind of a bad thing, you know, um, but you've done a good job at, at, at kind of bringing a little bit more usability out of it. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, which is not something, you, you know, um, if, if I'm doing something for a presentation, I would do kind of this level, maybe not quite, I haven't gotten quite as fancy as you, but, um, uh, but it's also a level of production beyond just, you know, just a simple black and white map with everything, mm -hmm. all the things the same yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, I, I have one um, ask, maybe, uh, which is to have one more box uh, that has um, your name and the date and a version number. Oh, number. yeah. Thank you. Great idea. Um, so I, I try to do, do that those for, for everyone. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, that, that is an oversight for sure. Thank you. It's really cool. Anything else before I go on? You're muted, Vincent, if you're trying to say something. No, that's okay. I'll save my comments for the end. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So the other one, so this is now pretend I clicked on a new story for humanity. So now that puts that knowledge set in the middle, but you see where you came from, right? So again, just, I, I would expect a design to have something that lets you know where you're going, especially if we're trying to do uh, proof of concept around being able to navigate through, um, then to me, that's a, an important component. Um, so anyway, so now we've landed on a new story for humanity, and now it's those presentations that happen, links to those videos, and then now we're getting a couple layers deeper where we're seeing who, 
the people were that were related to that particular topic or how that particular topic relates to other things. So now you start to see where the network starts to play a role so that um, you, you don't see the cyclical nature in any one shot, but it is a cyclical nature of connections so that you might, even though you're coming at it from a knowledge set, you end up back at leading questions, you know, or you end up back at a person or you end up back at something that was in the first, the first uh, map too, or first map as well. Um, and that's really it. It's just that, I mean, that's as far as it goes. All the other ones, which I'm happy to bring up. So I'm going to stop sharing for a second. Well, let me leave this up in case anybody wants to add. Now is a good spot because all the other ones are exactly the same. They just are different sets of information, but they're doing the exact same thing. And then maybe it might be nice um, to show you the one where it starts with the person in the middle. So I could show you that as well. So we can, those are the directions we can go with the conversation. Oh, I'm just I've gonna got a stop. thing, but I wonder if Vincent wants to go first. I think you should show the person centric. Okay. So let me stop for a second. Let me just pull that one up before I share again. I just learned something cool in doing that one that I can do for all of them. So hold on one sec. Realized I can show them all on the same screen, which I didn't realize I could do. Should be all of them. Yep. Yes. Okay. And let me share again. Okay, I guess I did them in a different order. Oh, it only did five of them, hold on. So now here are all the other sub pages, right? Same dynamic, same kind of links and node colors and everything, but you're just seeing the different orientation of each one with all its knowledge. And then there's the, there's the uh, personal one. So I use Shannon just because she looked like somebody who had some connections to more than just one thing, you know, so this is real. Um, this is the way I imagined it. Again, I, I made up some of the, and the first tier nodes where bio, her knowledge sets. So this would be what she's curated for herself, ideally, right? We may not have, we don't have that capability right now of her curating for herself. So it would be whatever in this case, a trove database has attached to her, right? Um, but ultimately it would be what she decides to curate for herself. So in this case, it's the presentation that she made and it's the writing that she did because Jamin highlighted a blog post that she had done all about um, the press conference. So it links to that, that blog post. It would be uh, ideally her leading questions or the leading questions the, the community is asking that she's interested in, in following up on, um, the events that she's interested in going to, right? So again, some of this I think already exists. Some of it doesn't because there's no way for her personally right now to curate the information, but it would at least get us to a first step. What I'm seeing here, basically you have a graph you're focusing on one node in its immediate neighborhood. So it's kind of a hyperbolic or maybe even spherical map of a graph. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so what you'd want is to be able to say, these are uh, the different points it connects to. Now I'm not into 3D or hyperbolic myself, as you know, um, but you are giving me an, a UX idea, which is to have. I, I need to. I need to think that one through. But there's something there. Yeah. So maybe this will help. So maybe you can bounce off this. The way I keep seeing it is in the way some people describe, right? Like, like shifting the, the sphere, shifting the ball and just, you know, having the point at a different spot. And then you see what's, what's there. Um, I know the Jerry's presented and some people have been working with like layers, layers of map 
you know, layers of maps on top of each other that connect through the layers. To me, this becomes both of those things um, in, in its ideal form, but it's in a 2D representation that somebody can actually make sense of, right? So this is where the purple filters come into play, for instance, where it's not showing all the presentations that have ever been done. It's showing the presentation from that particular um, point in time because the person would have had to say, set a filter for that so that it helps to simplify the field of view so that it's not overwhelming. So again, I can't represent it with scalpel, but the full, more of the full idea in my mind is literally the other presentations would might even be there represented visually, but they would be faded into the background so as to be almost negligible to the to, to being absorbed by the person potentially feel, you know, being filtered out completely, that would be their choice. But, but really not trying to say any information's disappeared, right? If we have all those layers, the other layers are just faded for the moment while we're looking at the top one is another way to think about it. Um, and so things can literally like shift past each other in and out as we pick different tags or we pick different filters or we pick different dates or we pick different people. And so there's a layer of complexity there that we can add in and yet still give people control over what they're seeing. But to me, we're not even there yet. <laughs> and I know it's built into a lot of the databases. So I know we can get there, but I don't know any interface user interface that can help us to use that information in that way yet. But that would be my hope. I don't know if that helped you or was along the right lines, Mark Antoine. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think I think I it's vague, but you know how I'm into uh, linearizing uh, views at uh, linearizing graphs with the uh, topological search into a line. Now, what we could do is make the line into a circle. And so any point on the line could be the become the center mm -hmm. or could even be, we could rotate the circle mm -hmm. so that any point becomes the top. And then that becomes the neighborhood could be put at the center like you're doing, but everything would be connected uh, to its place on the original circle. So we still have UX stability because yes. everything's connected to its original circle. And what is nice is we can show all links on the yeah. circle periphery as small little arcs yeah. that may fade or that whatever. But the ones that, the node that has been pulled into the inner view, and then we can even do layers in the circle, would then not show because they're showing here rather than along the circle. See what I'm saying? No, I missed that last piece. Can you try, try that one okay. again? Some nodes are showing in this flat view inside the circle. Mm -hmm. Each of those nodes is connected to and should be arranged visually so it's connected to its point on the, on the circle, which is stable, mm -hmm. All right? Modular rotation. Mm -hmm. Then any link that is inside the circle also exists as a little arc connecting points of the circle inside. And then those would be hidden because they're, they've been pulled in. But we still have all the other nodes. We can still trace this is connected to this, 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 this by following the arcs on the circle. Sorry, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I think I'm this. getting you. Yeah. I mean, again, in, in this design, a radial design like this with bubbles and stuff, it's not efficient. <laughs> it's not a lot that's efficient about it. You no, know, it's not but, scalable. But you're, not, what not. you're describing is more scalable. It's, uh, well, it is your design, but it's just that it allows me to have uh, continuous transitions to a stable uh, between uh, local representations that are connected to a stable representation, which for me is a goal. Having a stable representation is a goal and having continuous transitions like V3 morph is a goal. And now I'm beginning to see it. Uh, I was always doing things outside the circle. Mm -hmm. Now you're forcing me to think inside the circle. Mm -hmm. What can I put inside mm -hmm. the circle? 
And that means porting things from the circle. And that also means, yeah, I'll, I'll think more about this, but there's something there. Mm. Cool, thank you. Topological searches are the bomb. <laughs> Yeah, so to me, you know, the the design, the next proof of concept to me is to work with a data set that um, that proves scalability, right? Is and it would probably have to be a completely different design, right? And so I'm learning from both of those I, again, and I have a visual; it's very clear in my head. And then the third one would be to actually create the visual with no, without technical con, you know, confines to um, create what I'm actually seeing in my mind is being the optimal from a, from, again, my background being psychology, the, the optimal from a human perspective of navigating through data to get, you know, from one place to another with the least amount of friction and the best and most intuitive UX design right now, from everything I've learned, that's very difficult to do with a technology that exists in the way that I'm imagining it, but I could do a design prototype without those limitations and at least get it on paper so that we can kind of say, okay, here's a, here's a, here's a proof of concept that's more about how we navigate through everything and, and make it in a way that people can actually use. Then here's another proof of concept that has more to do with scalability, but here's another, here's where we're actually going. If we had our, you know, and they'll all, they'll all inform each other. And they'll all probably shift every time we do another piece. Oh, that'll change this and this piece. We update this one and it changes these two as, as our knowledge and understanding grows of the best ways to do things. Um, so that's, that's the kind of stuff I've been working on. And um, thank you, Vincent, for bringing it up. And <laughs> so yeah, I was kind of presented great, to, great. to the clam bake, you know, first to say, Hey guys, you want to talk more about this? And does this make sense as kind of a, a launching mm -hmm. pad for more detailed conversation and how we synergize a factor and trove and these other things to start really pulling stuff together? So first of all, awesome job with like putting, making a pro, like a really good prototype. Um, oh, good. I'm very because <laughs> um, for me that was that was playing in the sandbox like that was not hard for me at all so that good, was fun. I'm glad it was useful yeah no it was definitely very helpful for me to like see it visually after we've been talking about it um yeah and I think it shouldn't be too hard to prototype I think the the main thing that I'm taking away from this like the visualization is so I think there's a lot of benefit in how you've structured of having like your main node, having like a second ring and then having like basically having like the two concentric like rings of additional information. And I also really like how it's like, I was going to ask the question of like, what happens where you have like main node, then you have related members and then you have a hundred people. But I think where you had it, where it had that filter, that filter would show only a few of them and then you would click that node to see like everything else. So I think that filter mechanism makes it very simple to me that there's a rule here to make it not look like a mess um, and like keep it kind of curated. So like, like how the brain works, I don't feel like it has those like filters. And I think yeah. that's really a main piece here that differentiates a visualization tool like this versus the brain is that yeah. It has some constraints and ways to filter the information down. Yeah. Um, and, I also pictured just to add on to that, so people yeah, know please. this is obviously not capable of doing this, but um, Jonathan Sands um, uh, app that he created is, for instance, where along. I don't know if you can see my. Can you guys see my cursor? So I know I'm, you can see my cursor too, right? Yeah. So this link here, right? Maybe having a little button right here that collapses everything that's coming away from, from that particular thing, right? So you could take an entire branches of visible, and of course it's never just a branch because it's a whole network, but in your visual field of view, you could take that branch and collapse it so that you have a way to minimize. I just want to look at the bios, the presentations and the emergent. And now that I have just those three, now I actually want to expand the tiers 
to see where things start to connect, right? It would give options for how to edit the field of view so that I can create a working space for myself and then realize, oh, I wanna connect this person to this presentation. And now I wanna connect because I'm working with the branches that, that make sense to me without getting overwhelmed by the other information I don't need right now. So thank you, Vincent, yes. Yeah, and, and I, I think the, the main thing to like prototype this in Kumu, which is like, my background isn't in software, so I don't know how, maybe I'm asking this to Pete, Mark, Angela, and Zeke, you guys who have a little bit more um, experience, but like in, right now in Trove, there's like, you know, data type event, which then has, you know, all the events in that database. Then it has data type members, which has a list of all the members. Um, and then for like, for example, the press conference, there's within the event, there's links to multiple members, there's links to multiple presentations, there's links to multiple projects. It seems like this database is a, is a very obviously a graph database where it would need to be like, you know, name of the event type event, name of the project type project, and then another table where everything is all the, with all the connections. And then really the only thing that, like it looks like we would be able to get this graph automatically visualized like 90% of the way by having the node and then having the, instead of like the connection. So instead, like let's say um, the, the press conference is related to like uh, project trove. Instead of having a direct connection, instead it seems like it's gonna be the press conference, then it's going to be like, is there at least one project connected to this node? If so, then in that first ring, you add projects. And then in connected to projects are all the, the projects. And so it's it's kind of, it's almost, yeah, it's like in, in between the connection, you're like adding in the type and you're almost like grouping. It's like a graph way to group by type and then put that as the second ring. And so it, it seems like all I would have to do is figure out a way to like export the information that's in a, like a relational database into a nodes and connections graph database. And then this software would be able to, I assume, just group it by type and then cluster the nodes around uh, like a node that says what it is and then add an automatic like filter. Yeah, yeah, and and I think too it's important for our, for our thinking as we think about the way the database needs to be structured in order to generate something like this is that you know the 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 nodes um, like leading questions or basics or you know even collective intelligence was was a was a summary text that Jamin gave all these presentations. He organized it and came up with this name, right? It says to me, type, right? It's what you were talking about. It, yeah. It's almost like these, these nodes don't need their own page. They don't really have their own information. Although in some cases he wrote a little descriptive paragraph, which might be nice to capture. If you were to say, click on this and go to a, uh, it's almost like a dashboard, right? A dashboard that says, here's where all this stuff lives, but this isn't all that stuff. This is just a link to where all that stuff lives, <laughs> right? So, um, and in being able, so, you know, to me, I was thinking in my head and thinking about Airtable for you, Vincent, and going, I could go into Airtable, for instance, using these maps and say tag or categorize or whatever, and just add in the correct tags for each one of the each one of the um, videos or around certain people, or, you know, you and I could work on an air tip. That is not hard thinking for me. I'm not very technologically savvy when we talk about code. When we talk about tables and things like that, it's not a problem. So you and I could um, maybe talk, it, that might get us 95% of the way there, just doing that kind of work. Do you think, or am I off? Yeah, like, like I said, I think, um... And I'm just going to share this because this is the closest thing to what I have now is so this, this is the, um, I made, I have an Airtable template that I use to make this. And so this is obviously only one page, like one screenshot, but this is like basically at the center is like 
me and then around it is like the type like right leadership experience interest which could be like right if this was like the event it would be projects um right. members um the present the presentation. presentations yep and then and this is in kumu and so for each one of those you know we could have it where when you click the talks or presentations then it um let's see then it opens up here and then you could have links to all the sub ones yep so like when you like click like you know uh one of the presentations it'll open up there and then have the video exactly so we can very easily create this type of visualization um for the press conference and yep. in the same exact kind of format that that you laid out and i have yep. this as a yeah i have like a template to to basically export to kumu from airtable that would visualize it in this way yeah, and just to add, I know um, I did talk to Jonathan. I said, could we modify Kumu if we started dreaming outside of Kumu's capabilities? And he said, from what he looked at, and he did, I think, a week or two of, of exploring a bit there, he said no. So they that have a lot of, they have a lot of, of customization, but in terms, the only thing that I think we wouldn't be able to do is um, they even have filters, but they don't have filters, we, we could definitely make a prototype that's going to like look exactly like what you want and, and function like it, but it's not going to be like scalable or like right. automated. It's gonna right. be like manually made more yes. or less. But, but at least it gives us an up, sorry. Yet. Say that yeah. again, sorry. I think, yeah, I think we could from a, from a looks like and works like prototype, I think we could get most of the way there with Kumu. I think that makes the most sense because it's there, it's easy. We are, you already have figured out how to integrate it to Trove. And I think, um, and then it would give us an opportunity to give it to other people and say, what do you find useful about this? And what do you find sticky about this? And that would help inform, you know, whether another iteration, whether we stop there because it's too far away from being useful or whether, oh no, this is useful. Let's try it again on another plot, you know, with another grouping of data. So um, anyway. I, yeah, I, I guess for me, the next step would be for you to tell me, Vincent, and maybe to get Michael involved or whoever else wants to be involved to say how, you know, what are the next steps to just doing what I created in Scapple and Kumu and get as close as we can, right? To me, close is good enough for sure. And then, um, and if it's having a session where we talk about air tables and just figure out what's missing, figure out what we need to add, then let's do that. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll make a, now that I have a really good idea with the app, what I'll do is I'll make a button on Trove for like the event admins to export all of the, like I'll make a button that will like download a, a few different CSVs, a CSV of like the related projects, a CSV of the related sub events, a CSV of the related um, categories that were discussed. And then basically we'll be able to import those into Airtable. So it'll be a little manual, like lining up the rows and the columns. And then we can generate a Kumu graph from that. Okay. If you teach me how to do that, because I don't mean to be putting more on your plate. I mean, for this to be my, more my project with your guidance, if that serves you. So I'm just not, I'm not trying to dump on you is my point, right? So, and I'm happy to learn so that I can help be more supportive with the next one. So how much time do you guys have? Could I do a five minute um, work in the open type thing right now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's see. Okay, so if I go to the edit uh, event page, Oh, actually, I think I already have. Mm, never mind. Okay. Okay, so I have two downloads right now. I have one for the RSVPs and I have another one for the sub events. Um, 
So let's see. So I will just duplicate this. Uh, so copy with workflows, paste with workflows. I don't know why that pasted it all the way over there. Hmm. Did it again. <laughs> Did it again, yeah. Bubble has some weird uh some weird things you gotta work around. Glitches, yeah. Yeah. I think pacing with workflows is one of those things. Um, okay. So let's what what is probably one of the most important things you'd want to see visualized attached to the event, like projects, members. Yeah, so um, going back to my, I'll just pull what I already did, right? Since Jamin created such a good, um, oh, and I closed it, hold on. Such a good summary. It's really pulling from, you know, what he wanted to see as well. So yeah, which is kind of nice. Okay. So it was the basics, right? So whatever we want to call that, it would be like, the bio of the company, basically, or the bio of the event. Maybe the basics isn't, I use the basics. But I mean, that's... Okay, so, so yeah, basically, so when someone clicks that button, download projects, then what it's gonna do, it's gonna download information to CSV. The type of data for the first one is gonna be project, and it's gonna be the current page events um, relevant projects merge with the current page events, uh, host projects. Um, and then we can change the file name. So it could be current page events title, the date, and then we could just say projects. And then, um, so this lets you hide columns for the project. So for example, um, uh, we'd want to have the idea of the project to link back to it. Um, and we probably don't need to have, I'm just going to get rid of a lot of the information we don't, we don't need. Um, so like topics, um, I just want to keep this really basic. For now is clicking it is checking it checking not including it, it removes right. it so yeah I, I think we should include the project title the summary the type um we can do a a, a better export of this at some this, point yeah you're just me. yeah 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 um let's see we probably want to do the i see what you're doing now you're just setting up the 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 export a CSV link. Yeah, I just don't want it to be super overwhelming because there's a lot of um, okay help needed. And a lot of these fields are currently not being used, used. anyway. Yeah, they're not useful for this export because they're going to export as like um, an ID, right? Like to a group um, locations. Okay, so we're going to download that data and then um, for this one, for download the event data. I see what you're doing now. Then this is gonna download a CSV of just the information from the current event. So this is gonna be event data and it's gonna be the current. Actually, this is going to be do a search for events 
where the ID is equal to the current events ID. Um, and we're going to call it um, this events data for now. Um, There's no like check all. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? You think. Yeah. No one has as many fields as me because people don't use bubble to build. <laughs> no, they, they do, I'm sure. I think they need to have a check all button. But it's going to be way easier to check these all and go back and Or do the them. reverse, check the ones you want rather than. Uh, I know, right? Um, so yeah, what, what are the most important pieces of data you want to have from the, what are the basics? It was the title. Yeah, you did title summary, um, person, although I'm, I'm, I'm losing track of which set of data we're pulling at the moment, but, um, this is the, the basics, like the information about date. that, but I guess data is already set because it's from that event. I'm going to do the presentation categories. Um, the yeah, I can see how we could spend a whole session, Vincent, just setting a couple of these up, exporting and going, oh, shoot, we missed a piece of information, right? We need this too, <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. And then importing into Kumu and saying, shoot, we needed to do a different kind of export. And <laughs> and figuring it out as we go along. I think that would be really valuable. Yeah, yeah. And I'm actually following what you're doing enough that I don't I don't think I'd have trouble figuring out how to do this if you needed support doing this kind of stuff too. Cool. Yeah, no, that's- Which would allow me to play around with it. Export something, import into Kumu, see what I get, right? I need, I probably would, there'd probably be some benefit in me playing around in that space for a little bit. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I just I just updated. I what we just did, I pushed those to the product the live version. And then yeah. I'm gonna go to the edit event page for the press conference and I'll try downloading it. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Wix, where did you get Wix? I definitely didn't click Wix. <laughs> Um, so Wendy, I usually have a call with the organizers of the press conference in around 10 minutes. Um, so maybe if you're free, you should come to that call I am. and present what you've done <laughs> for the press conference. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, cool. And then we could continue um, working on this there. Um, yep. Cool. So yeah, now vent connection. So if I click download projects, We'll get a CSV yep. and then let me try to make an air table and import this. Yep. All right. So we're going to import data CSV. We're going to drag this in here, upload. Okay. We'll call this um, I'd been calling mine as like the Everwise map just because that's me. You know what I mean? Like if you want to keep using that, that's totally fine with me. That way it keeps it separate and your and your sphere of <laughs> and your your myriad air tables. Cool. So you know it's part of the testing phase, yeah. <laughs> um, great. So basically, what I would then do is add. So this is I don't know why I put the cover image as the first one. Um, so this first one is going to be the name, and then we're want going to want to add a like 
data type, which will be um, for all these, it's a project. Yep. And so if we import more data in here, then we would add like on top of it, like, okay, these are the profiles, right? And then below this, we put all the yep. profiles. Yep. Um, and then I'm just going to put the names here. Yes, the Kumu would, needs one table in the end, right? So it's two. It's one for the nodes and then one for the connections. connections. That's the way Kumu works? Yeah, so this would okay. have like link to a node. So this would be like node one. And then um, we would have another one for node two. Is that more like the tiers or is that more the type of connection shown between two nodes? Like do they, like when you're creating the table um, there, what's the instruction to Kumu, is it? So how I did it is then we're gonna have another type which is like mm, type project and like so this will be like type project okay type project type project now basically trove so how this is going to work and then there's one so like in kumu you have to have a node for the main link so for example this will be like the event and yeah. this will be like right uh like the center node yeah now this center node is going to be connected to the type project it's also yeah. going to be connected to the type profile yeah. um so, so what we would do is create a connection where we'd say um, the event is connected to projects. Got it. Oh, I see. Connected to profiles. Got and it. And then projects is connected to all of the projects. And so how we would do that in Airtable is basically just like here we would connect it to um, let's see event yeah so it's really manual isn't it well this could be very easily made automatic we're just like transforming the data basically yeah 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 so basically um, for this one, the type project would be connected to all of these nodes. Oh, gotcha. So it would be like, and I would probably flip it, but like the event is connected to the type project and then type project is connected to all the projects. Yep. Or we could connect it to three projects as like the highlighted projects, right? Like or whatever. Can, yeah. Yep. Then these can have a connection type. So this could be like all and then we could basically create another connection type that would be like filtered and then you could have it where at first it only shows the connection to like three projects and then when you click a button in kumu we could mimic the filtering function where then it would show all of them yeah okay so this is how we'd have to set it up and we'd have to import the other types of data below below yep. this below and that yeah to have it all exist together in one table yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'll, I'll yeah. share this with you. Thanks. Um, what email should I use? Just use my um, yeah, either Wendy at or the W McLean twenty two. Wendy at is fine. It's Wendy either at one. yeah. Everyone's wisdom .com. Yep. Yep. Does anyone else want access to this to play around? So that to me is what we probably want to yeah do to get it into then from from the air table then we have to export it into um import it into Google Sheets that's linked to Kumu that has the same structure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I think the 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 value for 
every single person who comes out of an event and goes, okay, now what? That would, that happened yesterday. <laughs> yeah. It happens to me every single time I go to anything and go, oh my God, that was amazing. And I totally want to follow up and here are all my notes to follow up on. Right. And there's, I end up doing three of them. And then a month later, I've forgotten, you know? So to me, this, if there's a value to people, um, a month in going, wait, who was it that said what, and which person was on the project. And <laughs> now I'm interested in getting now something else happened. So I'm interested in getting more involved in this problem. I can't even remember anymore. So forget it. Um, hopefully now might have a little more of a way to integrate the information for themselves, or at least know that there's, uh, even just knowing there's a repository that's a little more digestible. Um, like I found Jamin's email incredibly long and laborious. I don't think many people are going to read it all, but when I put it into a map and I could see a lot of it at once, I instantly knew what I was curious about learning more about. So mm -hmm. if it does that for other people, then I think even just that little step, I think that's valuable. I'm willing to put in the time to <laughs> try to see if we can add that value for other people. And if they see some value, then let's keep doing it. And if not, we'll figure out something else. I also think I lost the air table for my resume. I can't find it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have too many air tables. <laughs> so I was right in naming my air table, like the one you just created, like name it otherwise. Keep all those like separate. You're gonna drive yourself crazy. Well, I was right in saying that. I have literally like hundreds of air tables. So it's definitely just named bad. Something weird. Yeah. yeah you need geez. a map on top of all your air tables, Vincent. An air table, air table. Doesn't let you search by anything but the name of the base, which sucks. Oh, oh do you use workspaces? That What's that? Do you use workspaces? Uh, I think that's yeah, what they call. I have a, um, Airtable Pro has been so kind to give me a free workspace, unlimited Pro workspace, which has hundreds of collaborators on it that would otherwise cost me thousands of dollars a month. Gotcha. And so if I basically put anything that needs to have like premium functionality in one workspace because yeah. of the, because it's yeah, it's yeah. paid. Um, yeah. <laughs> I have uh, dozens of workspaces, but they're almost all free. So yeah, I totally get that. Um, not to distract you guys from the Kumu direction, I think you're going, going a, an excellent way. Um, a different approach would be to take one of your prototypes and um use a, a graphics library um to to rebuild them from uh simple data data structures kind of like their tables um uh it would be more or less doing the same thing but you might end up with more control of what you could generate and and so i guess the uh, uh library i'm thinking of there's a it's tempting to kind of like do everything at once right to try to get it all working um, but another way to do it is just to do kind of a simple thing. And so the thing that I'm thinking is uh, taking a, a, a diagramming library that lets you draw boxes and lines and with a little bit of JavaScript code or Python code or whatever. Um, and, then, and then just have the data that you've got and have somebody write the, a little program that generates the picture that you've, you've made. So then you can play with the code to generate the picture in different ways. And you can play with the data to generate more pictures um, without having to go through the step of doing it in Scalpel. Um, so yeah, the... you would need a coder and a, and a diagrams library. I've been furiously looking at diagramming libraries and they're, they're all not quite right, but, um, but it would be another way to, to prototype a little bit. Wait, so Pete, how, would um, getting the data into right, the graph database connections and nodes format would be useful for any of those purposes to, to be able to import the data into, right? Because you're not going yeah, to yeah, visualize yeah. it without data. So I imagine putting it into a relational or a graph database the, structure. The Airtable thing. The first step, right? Yeah, the Airtable thing is, is really useful. Let me see if I can find. Uh, no, I yeah, and I think oh, one no. of the things that Kumu offers, but Vincent, tell me if I'm wrong, is then it's also 
Kumu can be, it's not just representative of the data. You can also, it also has the hyperlinks, correct or no? It, it, it gives you, a, it, it's, um, it accelerates you a lot and gives you a lot of stuff, but then you, you end up only being able to do Kumu kind of, I don't know. So. I, oh, no. Like, yeah. No, Kumu is, and Kumu has its limitations, but one of the things that I liked about it, so maybe we're saying the same thing, maybe we're not. So let me just ask and we'll find out is that once you're navigating, let's say I'm a person navigating through using Kumu, then if I click on the Kumu map, it actually moves me around if I remember right. Like, and if you yeah. click on stuff, it opens up a page, yeah. right? And yeah. then there's an embedded, right? Yeah. So to me, that that's the huge advantage that I don't have with many other. So, so let me try to <laughs> explain a little bit. Yes, um, thank you. So I think you see my whole screen, right? I do, yeah, thank you. Um, so this is a this is called GraphViz. Um, it's a really cool library that draws um, graphs, uh, graph graph data, and the um, this is the syntax for drawing the graph data. Okay. Super 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 simple, right? Yeah. Um, so each of these, uh, you know, is a you have the declaration of what this is up here. You yeah. don't have to be this fancy with it. You can be a lot less fancy, yeah. but uh, if you took the Airtable and then just had the Airtable export this, um, uh, you can generate this, right? And, and it just like, so it's it's kind of like it, you could do, if you had a little bit of glue, you could create a bunch of those scalpel diagrams and make them look different in different ways um, real quick. I so think. it's not this isn't interactive it's it's a batch thing where you know you you generate the data um, and then you click a button and it makes a graph yeah. but you could you could make a bunch of those and you can make them in different ways um, so this one it turns out this one uh, this particular visualization library is brilliant at drawing graphs but it it kind of auto draws them and you couldn't get you, you can't get that the cent center um, rectangle that you've got, for instance, using this library. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's got a diff couple different layout engines that do different things, but not not the one that you want. So yeah. then you need to something simpler like D3 or something like that, which is just a library that lets you draw shapes and lines. But the so I guess and and the other the other part of this was is that you would need a coder who's doing you know JavaScript and D3, but it's a pretty quick set of code. And then you can do a lot with that, just generating static pictures of what you want it to look like um, and, and iterating through, you know, Multiple. layouts and scaling and, and stuff like that without kind of the overhead of trying to drive Kumu the right way and getting the things that, you know, Kumu is going to give you a lot of stuff, but um, it, Yeah, I mean, to you know, if we have it in Airtable, it'd be super easy to make the formulas to generate that code. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. To play around more and more with and so see what we can get. But I'd love to put it into that, into that. Um. Yeah. Um. Like graph, graph visualizer as well. Yeah. Um, I mean. Just to, just to, a thought, and don't let me slow you down with the Kumu stuff. No. No. Right. And I, it all has value. Right. The question is, which one? And and uh, for. Yeah, I, this is where I need, it's almost like I need, you know, my marketing hat goes on and I go, we need, we need, a, <laughs> we need people in a room to try it out and see if they like it, don't like, you know, what's useful for people, what not, because what I think useful not isn't necessarily useful to somebody else. So, um, yeah. So to me, Kumu just solved, um, they have enough versions of design um, yep. layouts, um, and enough flexibility and the fact that Vincent had already, you know, had already done some work with it that I had seen that had said, yeah, you know, and so this is the conversation Vincent, I'm um, sorry, Vince, uh, Jonathan Sand and I have been having over the last month or so too, is going through different possibilities and just keep landing back with, okay, we need to simplify. We just need to try, you know, try it with something. Yep. And so I was coming up with, well, let's try it with Kumu 
just it's just one, right? Let's just try and yep. and get it to at least that point. We learn a little bit about how we need to structure data. We learn a little bit about what's useful for people. We learn a little bit about right, and then we may scrap Kumu because it's not enough and move on to something else, or we may say, oh, let's tinker a little more with Kumu and see what we can come up with. I, I think all of that is possible is a possibility. Do we like a more nested, we don't care what it looks like ball of yarn version, or do we like a very streamlined, you can filter out tons of stuff version? Do we, you know, I have my preference, but that's my preference. And that's not what this is about. This yep. is about creating something that's usable for, for people and flexible enough that most people will want to use it, right? So asking those questions is very different than what can we learn from this data, right? Yep. It's a very different question to say, how can we get to the data that I personally, as an individual person, want to get to? It's a completely different set of problems and solutions. So now all we can do is start playing, <laughs> see where see where it goes. Yep. Yeah. But thank you for those other options. It's always good to know. And I think that's kind of what I was saying. If we start thinking or talking or deciding that something like a free Jerry's brain could benefit from some more of these visual kinds of things, or I could learn more about what's being done in that sphere, right? Then, then we're talking about it, probably a completely different set of tools, right? Or a completely different approach, because now it's a scalability problem where you need to be able to show 50 things at once, or you need to be able to show, you know, on one page and how, and that's where Mark Antoine talking about this, this breaking the circle and making it more of a line or a curve where you yep. can see a bunch of, textual lines packed on top of each other starts to make more and more sense too. So yep. we'll, uh, we'll, get, we'll get there. It's, it's going really good. You're doing really well. Oh, thanks. Yeah. One step at a time. Zeke is happy too. Thanks Zeke. <laughs> so um, eventually all these worlds will meet. Let's see if we can get a couple, at least two of them talking to each other. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Um, Vincent, do you have to get off to a call? Or is it kind of? Um, yes. yes. OK, so let me know how to go into that, because it does make sense to me to at least show them what I've done in case that in the case they have some feedback right off the bat. Yeah, definitely. So let me, um, you know, I actually don't have an event on the calendar yet for this, so I'm going to create one right now, and then I will. Um, you want to send it, send a link to me and Mattermost or on Telegram or something? Let me grab the Zoom link and I'll just put it in the chat so you have it. Okay. Thank you guys for a great yeah, meeting. Yeah, thank you. And I'm excited for, for how far this group is coming to and trying to provide some sort of asynchronous collaboratory <laughs> space. <laughs> I know that's hard work too. Yep. It's fun. We'll get there. Yeah, eventually. Zeke, thanks for coming. Yeah, so good to see you. We have to catch up sometime soon. Good stuff. Get yeah, in there one step at a time. Yeah. Definitely, um, definitely sync up with uh, Marc Antoine and, and graphs and recursive hypergraphs. Yeah, cool. Um, also, too, I just uh, wanted to mention there's a bunch of low code tools and platforms out there these days worth looking into. I, I'm not familiar with it, but. Um, might be worth looking at some of that stuff. I, I posted a few links I thought might be helpful um, in the Mattermost too. Um, thanks. Oh, good, yeah, you did it Mattermost too? Yeah. Okay, good, so I don't wanna lose it. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Eve. Cool, yep. All right, yeah. till next well, time. Guys, thanks. All right, see you guys soon.